Meatloaf here in London. It's very, very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Oh, really? How are you, actually? I'm wonderful, and you? Yes, I'm fine. I've been waiting a long time to meet you, and I'm finally here, so I feel fine. Oh. Could you tell me something about, um, of course, the new album, The Very Best of Meatloaf? Mm -hmm. Did you feel that the time was right to release a best of? No, the record company did. Really? Yeah. You need you know. the money. Yeah, they need the money, you know. They just, I don't know. They just don't put out enough records anymore. No, they just, they've been wanting to do that for a while, and, and I, I, I fought them for a while as well. So, they, um, they, you know, it, it was partly due to uh, a, a thing in America as well. So, but it, but really one of the reasons I put it out is because I had the opportunity to get rid of all the stuff mm -hmm. that had been put out that I didn't authorize and without my knowledge. There's, you know, like this hits out of hell and there was this all this paraphernalia mm -hmm. that people have put out that I had nothing to do with. And, and, and if you're a performer and you're on one record label and you do records for them, that's fine. They have that. But when, they, when you leave that particular label, mm -hmm. they can just start putting anything out they want. And I don't think the average person knows that. But it is very, uh, uh, whatever, very something, <laughs> very uh, frustrating is the word, very frustrating to go into some record store and see some product there that you're going, why are they doing that? It's almost like, you know, it's, it's stealing from you. It, 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 so I had the opportunity to do this and get all of that pulled out and pulled off the shelves so that it won't be there anymore. Because I just think that it rips people off because I don't have anything to do with it and it's, I didn't create it. So that was one reason that I did this now. So that it's one thing and that I, that I was very much involved with and had control over. And so instead of just all this other, excuse the word, crap mm -hmm. out there. Even though it's got my name on it, and I'm proud of the songs, but the way they combine them, the way they do it, they, they don't do it with any care or thought. There are actually uh, three new songs on the very best of Meat Love. And I thought it was um, awkward that you used two songs from one musical, uh, Whistle Down the Wind by James Diamond and uh, Andrew Lloyd Webb. Why do you use two songs from one musical on the very best album? Well, first of all, The Kiss is a Terrible Thing to Waste was written before the musical was written mm -hmm. and it was written for me to sing the musical because Andrew Lloyd Webber got with Steinman and said looks and I want to do stuff like you do with Meatloaf and so they wrote that as kind of a a starting point and so they always had intended for me to sing it so it's really my song before any of the before they made any deal for the musical or anything that was sort of like this and and if they hadn't had the musical I would have done the song which was fine then the song, no matter what, um, Jim played me the song, and I thought it was an extraordinary piece of music, and I thought it was some of Jim Steinman's best lyrics ever. And um, and I'm the kind of person that I, I I wouldn't have done any other song from that. Uh, I did "Kiss a Terrible Thing to Waste" because that was really written for me to start with. And no matter what, if I hear a great song. I don't care. I don't care what. I don't care if you know, it's in Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, a children's musical. If it's a great song, it's a great song. It's like, I I wouldn't be opposed to doing a Cole Porter song, you know, from a musical. I wouldn't be opposed to doing uh, the Gershwin Brothers, you know, from Porgy and Bess. I I don't. It doesn't make any difference if it touches you and it means something. I, I you know, it's like people sometimes get this elitist attitude about things. And I don't have that. It's like, oh, well, you can't do that because of that, you know. Well, it's, it's a lot of bunk. Because if it touches you and it's in your spirit and it touches your heart, then do it. And, and sh who cares what anybody else says? I really don't care. Well, when you, when you were uh, recording No Matter What, did you already know that Boy Zone, a boy band, would use it as well? No, I was lied to. I didn't know that it would have been released as a single until it was number one in this country. No. Somebody called me up on the phone and they said, uh, 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 this is how they talked to me too. They, um, uh, me, uh, uh, 
I knew after we had cut the beginning of the track that, that Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, didn't want to have me do two songs on this particular album. I didn't want to. I didn't want it on there. But he wanted that song, so they cut this track for Boy Zone. And in fact, the Boy Zone, be perfectly honest, now whether they would tell you this or not, but I was around at the time, they didn't like the track. And neither did I. And I thought the track had nothing right about it that did, didn't say anything about the song. It was just some, you know, little pop track. Yeah. And, and that, it's not, the song is not some little pop song. And it's really not. And, um, uh, it, you know, it's probably the biggest hit in England this year, but that that doesn't mean I, I don't care, and I don't care what anybody says. They can throw rocks at me in bottles, and I I feel the way I feel. Um, it doesn't capture the moment of the song, and Boyzone didn't like it. And then Steinman, I guess, went in and did something, but I had no idea that they had released this single till it was number one in this country. At which point, I said, Well, I'm taking it off. Because originally it was meant to be the last song on this Greatest Hits. That's where it was. And then I got really upset. And then I, I reverted completely. And I said, no, nope, not going to be the last thing. It's going to be the first thing. It's going to be the first thing that happens. And it's it, because rock and roll is a rebellious... Um, it, it's always meant, you know... You rebel mm -hmm. against something early on. It was rebel against your parents. It's always been a rebellious thing because, you know, your parents listen to Frank Sinatra and you listen to, you know, whoever. And they listen to this and you listen to that. And my mother hated Bob Dylan, so I played him all the time. Very loud. And, yeah, yeah really loud. And uh, so that's what that is. And I have uh, such a rebellious streak in me that I, I, I just I don't, don't like that. So I put it first. And and uh, I guess just so that a lot of people would ask me a lot of questions about it, but and I have nothing against Boys Zone. They have nothing to do with it. Mm. They're, I've met them. They're really sweet guys. I like them. It has absolutely nothing to do with them. It has to do with the people that run the other side. And we won't talk about names, but they're liars.